In today's video, I'm gonna tell you good and bad sources for weight loss tips. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. And if you wanna speak with me, there is a link below. Don't forget to check out my new program, The Empowered Eating System. You can enroll today. What are good and bad sources for weight loss tips? I'm gonna tell you right now. So there's good, there's okay, and then there's just bad. I spent a lot of time in my 20s, even my early 30s, uh, studying diet and weight loss and nutrition hacks. And I realized there were good sources and there were bad sources. I didn't know that at the time. Like when I was in my early 20s, I was very impressionable. I didn't know good from bad. But after you start looking at various sources, you begin to realize that some people know what they're talking about and others don't. So I'm gonna start with bad sources for weight loss tips. First bad source is bodybuilders and personal trainers. I've talked about personal trainers before, um, but bodybuilders, they are on a different level. Everything revolves around what they eat and what they lift. And then personal trainers, for whatever reason, they're just drawn to some really weird ideas about diet and nutrition. They can't seem to stick to the fundamentals. Some of them do. Some of them keep it really simple, but too often I see them telling their clients that they need to have this protein powder or BCAAs, or they need to have a uh, you know, protein bar. Uh, they need to have some weird diet. They need to do carb cycling, for example. In fact, most people, they don't need to do any of that. They just need to learn um, how to control what they, put, what they put into their mouths. Most people need behavioral modification and environmental modification too. They don't need complex diets. They don't need macros. They don't need to track everything. I think it's too much, especially in those early stages. Master the fundamentals and then you can think about that. Bodybuilders are the same way. They don't eat and behave and think the same way normal people do. Like they have their own goals. They're trying to lift, they're trying to get big, fine. But they shouldn't be giving people weight loss tips. The other bad source is online forums. I think the, the day of the forum has come and gone. I think Facebook killed the forum. There are still some forums. I think City Data still has a pretty uh, robust or active forum, I should say. A lot of people who were in forums 10 years ago, now they're in Facebook groups. And I find that it's blind leading the blind. It, nobody really knows what they're talking about. They're just sharing tips and ideas. And I did this and it worked. And that's, in, in science, they call that N equals one, okay? Number of subjects is one. And that's not very powerful evidence. So it's just people sharing things. And a lot of these people, a lot of the people in these groups, they don't necessarily have the result that you're looking for. They don't have expertise. It's just, they're telling you what worked for them. So I would avoid these groups. They're not, they're not good sources of information and they're gonna leave you more confused because there's no, there's no judge, you know, there's no arbiter. There's nobody saying, no, this is right, this is wrong. The other bad source is popular doctors. And I won't name names here. If you, know, if you join my program, then I'll give you names. But right now, um, you know, I don't want to be too critical of any one person. But usually they have a best-selling book. They're on popular shows. They appear in magazines. You kind of have a good idea of who I'm talking about. But again, they're drawn to these really strange ideas about what to eat. And they're always promoting weird diets. And they're telling you you have to eat this way. And they're really regimented. And they're, they're really, like, dogmatic about what they preach. And I guess they have to be because they're selling. Remember, a lot of this is for entertainment purposes only. A lot of it is edited and they're not telling you everything. There's a lot of commercial breaks. They're trying to please the corporate sponsors that, that sponsor these shows. Another bad source of weight loss tips is models. You should not be taking weight loss tips from models. Models are paid to diet. They are paid to starve. They're kind of like the opposite of bodybuilders, right? Bodybuilders are always jacked. They're trying to get as strong as possible. They they walk around with Tupperware filled with, um, you know, grilled chicken and broccoli, and everything is measured. And well, models are kind of the same way, right? They're they're paid to starve themselves. They're paid to look abnormally thin. You have these five foot ten models who weigh 120 pounds. It's just it's it's abnormal. So when I see these videos like what I eat in a day as a model and it has one million views, I'm thinking why these are not these are not good sources of information. I guess because a lot of people watching those videos want to be models or want to look like models. So what are some okay sources for weight loss tips? I would say social media and YouTube specifically. I see some good stuff on YouTube. You know, there's not, there is some quackery, don't get me wrong. There's still a lot of diet culture going on uh, on YouTube. If you see stuff like you know, superfoods and cleanses and 
yeah, I, I would stay away from that. But a lot of these YouTubers seem to know what they're talking about. And when I watch them and say, okay, that sounds, that sounds reasonable. Instagram is okay, that's more short form content. So I think out of all of the social media, I think YouTube is probably the best. There's a lot of good recipes on there, people promoting healthy diets. Again, there, there are some people on YouTube who are not promoting the soundest diet. They're not giving you the best information. There is some dogmatism. There is some cult-like behavior on YouTube, but YouTube is okay, okay? And again, if, if you wanna know who I think is a good source of information on YouTube, join my program. <laughs> some of the fitness magazines are okay. Some of these people who are writing for these magazines do have expertise. They at least have some background in health and fitness. I, I find that it's better today than it used to be. They used to be promoting all sorts of stuff. But now if you read something like Men's Health or um, Muscle and Fitness, you're gonna get okay advice. Sometimes they make it too complicated and they're always coming out with new stuff and new tips and uh, you need to do this and you need, eat, need to eat that and here are the latest findings. And so you can confuse yourself. I used to read a lot of these magazines in my early days. I remember I would always pack like Men's Health when I went to work because that's what I wanted to read, which is fine. There is some utility in those magazines, but you're still not gonna get the best of the best. And like online forums, I think the, the day of the magazine has come and gone. This channel would not be possible without Estatino Artists. Start your YouTube channel and start producing content. Check out the Creative Business Academy. There is a link below. All right, back to the video. So stay away from the models. If you watch a video about a model who, and she's showing you what she eats in a day, understand it's probably not that accurate there's probably a little bit of embellishing there and she's not showing you what she eats the three to four days before a photo shoot okay so now what are some good sources of information you should listen to people who have been there done that you know people who have been around the block follow people who have been fit and then gained weight and then lost it again somebody like me <laughs> uh, who's that guy Derek Manning I think it's like fit, fat, fit. You know, he was fit and then he deliberately gained weight and then he lost it again. Um, Susan Pierce Thompson, you know, she was obese and then she lost the weight and she kept it off, which is pretty remarkable. Follow people who have done that, not people who have always been fit. People who have always been fit can never truly empathize with people who have been overweight and had to lose it. So for me, I did triathlons in my early 20s. That's when my ED started. I'm not blaming it on triathlon and everything went together. But then I developed. Uh, chewing and spitting and then bulimia and then binge eating disorder and I gained a bunch of weight I think at most like 50 pounds it was a lot enough to affect my self-esteem my body image for sure and it definitely affected my physical performance but then I figured out how to overcome this and that's what I teach my clients now but to make a long story short I was I was fit and then I got fat and then I got fit again okay you should also listen to people who don't promote any one diet are they promoting advice? Are they dispensing the advice that seems reasonable, that seems logical? Are they telling you to eat a whole foods, plant-based diet? Okay, even if it's not a plant-based diet, does it seem reasonable? Are they telling you to cut out entire food groups? Does it seem rational? Does it seem extreme? I, I see these people who are eating nothing but you know, bananas. That's one extreme. And then I see people doing carnivore diets. That's another extreme. Avoid the extremes. You'll be so much better off in life if you can avoid those extremes. You should also follow people who don't make food and diet their obsession. Are they eating reasonable foods? If they're packing everything and they and their macros are dialed in and they weigh things and they're obsessed about it, even if they're healthy, they, they are giving so much attention to what they eat that it's probably not worth it. You should also listen to people who have lost weight and did it without developing an eating disorder. And they did it in a reasonable amount of time. Don't listen to people who lost you know, 40 pounds in three months. That's, that's not healthy, that's not right, that's not typical. Follow the person who lost 40 pounds in a year and didn't develop an eating disorder and still has a healthy relationship with food and didn't follow some extreme diet. If somebody loses 40 pounds in two months, they dieted excessively. They did some you know, water cleanse or they went on a seven day fast or they did something unusual. Don't take advice from them. Again, avoid the extremes. 
the health and fitness industry is filled with the extreme, so don't follow it. Follow people who lost weight without developing an ED and didn't go to the extremes. Follow people who eat a whole foods plant-based diet. It doesn't have to be vegan, it doesn't have to be vegetarian, but most omnivores eat primarily plants. It, you know, it's cheaper, it's more convenient, you can only eat so much meat in a day. And then follow people who have a healthy lifestyle. You know, do they look healthy? So who are the bad sources of information? Bodybuilders, models, most personal trainers, some of these really popular doctors who are promoting these weird diets. Okay sources are social media and YouTubers. A lot of YouTubers are good, not all of them. And then the best sources of information are people who lost weight, kept it off, didn't develop an ED, and they lost it in a reasonable, reasonable amount of time, and they didn't do anything extreme. I hope you found this video educational and entertaining. Don't forget to subscribe and check out my free resources below. If you liked this video, I'm sure you'll like one of the other videos you see on the screen. Click one of them and I'll see you there.